Welcome everybody. I'm Sibrand Dijkstra. I'm the founder and passionate uh, creator of uh, DJ Studio. Uh, we have a really nice uh, session today with four speakers. Uh, everybody underestimated the traffic in uh, Amsterdam, so they will drop in uh, one by one. Um, I'm gonna uh, tell you something about DJ Studio, a door for DJs. If you Google a DAW for DJs, you will find a lot of DAWs, but there's none of them for DJs. Uh, they're built for producers. And most producers are DJing and some DJs are producing, uh, but it's something different. So uh, basically you have four options to make a DJ mix. Uh, option one, um, starting in the 70s, we had a pattern turntable on the left, turntable on the right, two sliders, six knobs. And well, that pattern didn't change. We only got more, more knobs, more effects. Uh, but it's still there. So if you want to make a DJ mix uh, old school uh, or uh, a present school, press the record button and an hour mix takes an hour. Um, if you're lucky, if you make mistakes, you need an audio engineer to edit your mix. Option two, the DAWs, Ableton, Logic. Um, for me, it's pretty impressive as a wannabe DJ uh, playing with uh, Ableton. And once I start reordering tracks, well, uh, I start uh, saying less kind words. And so that wasn't an option for me as well. But there was an option and it was called Mixmeister. And the older people here uh, know it. That's what I used for the last 15 years. And it was a Windows application with a timeline where I could make my own playlists. I'd like to play my own uh, music. Uh, I can DJ a little bit, but this is much more comfortable. Um, unfortunately, uh, it didn't get updated anymore. It got deprecated. So I got to the moment that I said, well, now uh, we need to do something about it. So if you look at the landscape, we have Mixmeister. That's a doll for DJs, but it's not supported anymore. Uh, we have the, the, the live software. Uh, that's pretty time consuming and you need to have the, the right skills. And we have the DOS. Uh, well, they are for producers. And then there's option four and that's DJ Studio. And with uh, DJ Studio, we uh, work with a large team. We have 25 people uh, coding on DJ Studio. So we're absolutely here to create um, uh, something really cool for the DJs. Uh, we want to create a mix uh, fast. Uh, we connect to existing music libraries, uh, but we also connect to online music uh, sources. Um, we have uh, AutoMix, where we help you order your playlist. So. That's already sometimes, uh, if you have 17 songs and this is your radio show, go order them. Well, we help you. Um, and we export to uh, uh, major uh, platforms where we uh, help you for YouTube, for example. We also deliver video with your MP3. Uh, YouTube has content ID. They respect uh, the creators. So uh, no takedowns uh, like you could have on SoundCloud. And it's a nice uh, platform. So you get videos with it. Um, we connect to the, uh, the libraries, so whatever you have uh, as an existing music library, we connect to it, so you don't need to import it. Um, we do harmonic mixing, plus one, minus one, um, uh, but also uh, plus uh, seven, uh, crossing uh, the, uh, the harmonic wheel. So we do have some uh, color codings for you, and uh, we can uh, help you order this playlist. So let's say you have 15 songs for the geeks, uh, one times two times three times four uh, times 10, it's 3.9 million already times 11, 39 million. And so that goes up. So if you have 15 songs, you have 1.3 trillion options that you could order your playlist. So that's why you're never finished in finding the perfect order. Uh, what we do, we have something called AutoMix and we have an algorithm that you can give a certain amount of time uh, default is 30 seconds and in that period we try to find the best harmonic ordering of your list uh, including BPM so we take BPM into account and we finish the set uh, with a high BPM we start a set with a low BPM you can even give a direction saying hey this is my intro or this is my outro you can lock them and then we do auto mixing in between and we come up with a really good set and if there is a hole, you see these, these crosses, uh, you can click the cross and we come up with a solver and we say, hey, if you put this track in here, or these two tracks, then it sounds perfect harmonically. But for a radio show, that's not an option, of course. Um, 
we have a timeline. We ha. So we can stop time. We can go back in time and we go, can go forward in time. And uh, what you see over here is a blue, that's the transition window. And in the transition window, the magic is happening. We have presets in here for volume, a crossfade, uh, for bass, a bass swap. You can create some tension by removing some, uh, uh, some bass lines in there. And uh, you see the, the, the color markers in here. Those are the phrases uh, that we import from Recordbox. So those phrases, you can click them and press delete. If you want to make a, a quick mix, click, 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 and it's shorter. But the transition window is where the magic happens. So you can just drag your songs underneath the transition window and find uh, the right position. And of course, you can do manual transitions as well. So if you love playing with the automation uh, points, that's uh, also possible. So if you look at our workflow, we have a lot of music sources where we uh, find your music online or on your local machine. Then you have this auto mix button, you press auto mix, then you work on your transitions and if you press next in our software you go to the next transition. So it's all about creating the radio show fast and then you can export it. You export it to YouTube, you get a video with it. Uh, export to Ableton, you're gonna see we are the first company in the world as far as I know who writes an Ableton project file. So once you're finished in DJ Studio, you can continue your workflow and your mastering uh, in Ableton. And we have Mixcloud, of course, and we have Recordbox. And no, we don't export the transitions to Recordbox, but uh, we do transport uh, the, the, the playlist for you. So if you just drag in your songs and you're five minutes before a show, hmm, how should I, should I order it? Press Automix, you get uh, a nice suggestion for an harmonically ordered a uh, list, uh, export it to an M3U8 file uh, for Recordbox, drag it in there, and uh, you're ready to go. So, this was my really fast introduction. I'd like to give Luke uh, as much time as possible. So, um, uh, Luke, the stage is yours, and I'll switch to the software. Yeah, of course, this mic is going to be too high now, right? No, <laughs> we're good, we're good. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, it's funny because he just took you through like a, a, a super speedy course of what this thing actually does. Looks quite complicated, but I'm actually here to tell you that it is fantastic. Like, um, I remember meeting with uh, Sibrand and... They explained it to me a bit, and I was like, ah, it kind of looks like Ableton. I don't know if this is really going to be beneficial, but let me tell you, it is. It's, a, it's incredible. It really blew me away. S so intuitive. You, you see, uh, well, I'm going to show you, but you'll see the transitions and whatnot, and it's like, I didn't even need explaining mo much. And I think uh, a DAW for DJs kind of sounds scary. Um, but I think, I think that's properly how it's summed up, where it's very intuitive for DJs, even DJs that have never produced, where it's like, oh, you can draw out, you know, the transitions and the mixes and whatnot. And so uh, I'm going to give you some concrete uh, examples. Let me see where... Oh, yeah, here's, here's my project. Um, so this is my uh, latest radio show for Tomorrowland Radio. I did a, a radio... Uh, see, here's the thing as well. Maybe I'll touch base on it in a little bit. Yeah, well, no, I'll dive into it right now. You have this thing where um, you need to do radio mixes. What I personally love and have always loved is to just press record for an hour, do the mix, hand it into radio. Nowadays, there, a lot of times they expect you to, to actually digitally make a mix and there shouldn't be any like super flaws or super technical mixes in there. And when I do a mix in Ableton, an hour mix takes me at least two hours, maybe three. And my radio show as well, it takes me about four hours to drag and drop and then uh, fiddle with all the automations and it, it just takes up a lot of time. And so I'm, I, I'm here to bring the good news that all of this doesn't need to take a lot of time anymore. So uh, my radio show and um, these are all the tracks that are in there. I have like a space for 17 tracks per show you can basically just drag and drop them or locate them on your computer and there's many more you can do to it but I just have a folder with like the track list and I dump them in there. And then um, you can literally press 
press open or um, there's an auto mix function as well, right? Which I won't show you, but the auto mix function is crazy. So the AI will determine your track list order for you um, and will show you if the mixes you did are properly and mixed in key and energy and that sort of thing. And this is what I love as well is that they have an energy system in there. For me personally, that's really important because I don't really look at keys much. To me, it's more about the vibe and that sort of thing. And so you saw what I did. So there, there were these 17 tracks. I, I pressed open, and if you make a new project, it's, it's these tracks, and then you can choose auto mix, but it'll just show up like this, boom. Like usually in Ableton, I would be like dragging every single track in there, and then, okay, le let me look at transition one, let me make a transition, but it's already there. And um, so this is, let me see real quick, um, automation. No, uh, transition. So what I loved about this as well is that the crossfades and the bass swap settings, when I, when I actually DJ, I love just swapping the bass instantly. They're already in the standard mix. So le le let's just listen to this uh, first transition right here. Can we get some more volume? And then we're out. Uh, and it's crazy because it's already there, right? But what if I don't like this particular mix? You know, we are sitting here, we're kind of rushed today, we have a lot of meetings, this transition is a little, a little bit long, okay. So then I can make this transition, instead of 16 bars, I can make it eight. So now it's shorter. <laughs> or four bars, super short mix. And it's, it's the same thing, it'll do the same thing with the filters and, and the EQs and whatnot. But just really short. And then we're out. Now, if you want to change these parameters, so let me just put it on, on eight bars here. So for instance, the cross fade, which is the volume in and the volume out, you can adjust as well. So you see the lines changing as I give it a, a higher percentage. So it'll be a smoother cross fade, less abrupt. Uh, the bass swap as well, you can, Oh, yeah, the bass swap, this is funny, because if, if you uh, give it a higher uh, rate, you'll take out the bass uh, like four notes before, before the actual swap. Um, but you can also manually draw it, and now you're going into like Ableton realms where, uh, so this, this one is out, right? You can just draw, draw the bass, and maybe I wanna, want, want it to be smoother. Uh, smoother here. Uh, oh, this this should be in. So this one comes in. Double click this. Oop. Uh, this one out. And so yeah. So now we have the the transition like that. Now say this is your ultimate fantastic signature transition. You can save this as a preset. So yeah, I can just press save and then I'll choose, uh, say like choose target preset. Maybe I'll, I'll choose preset one. And then if I go to the next transition, which is transition number two, I could just add this preset. And this is correct, right? Because I, I have, I've not worked with uh, the presets. Is this, this correct? You, you can't copy it. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, but it's it's super handy. So. Obviously, you can go crazy and you can go and draw all your automations and, and uh, uh, bass frequencies and, and fades and whatnot. This is another function that I really love. So um, if, we're, if we're here and you press a uh, loop in, you, get, you just get a, get a loop in. It's crazy. It's already there. Or when you press loop out, it'll just create a loop out for you. Um, and the same goes for, you know, any section of any track. 
and it looks so complicated, but what I love is that the grid is so uh, sticky, so magnetic. You literally, like, so if I do this in Ableton, it's always trying to determine where the first kick is or where the first eight bars begins and that sort of thing. And over here, you can just almost, like, click on the screen anywhere and it'll always be good. So just made a selection and then you can choose loop, uh, command D, right? Yeah. Or maybe just this and loop two times or four times. Super easy. So when the, when the, when the program has made all of these transitions, you can just go through them one by one, see if you like it. So, um, there was this one shorter one. Ah, let's listen to this. I'll, I'll make it a shorter one. <laughs> and here we go. Well, say you know, I want this uh, this to drop in the in the break <laughs> at, at the end of the mix, right there at the at the number two. I can just also delete this part, right? I'll just drop it to the as if I'm hitting a cue point. There it is. So it, it makes all of this so much easier, and so instead of uh, mixing two hours. This was in there f in 15 minutes. I had, had a huge week of deadlines, like I needed to finish all of these things. And usually I'm just trying to like cope somewhere in between. But this was just there. It was just there. And I can just fix it afterwards or, or uh, yeah, move it around, you know. If, if I don't want it to be in the break, you can, you can just grab it and move it. Um, like Sibrand said, right? Let me see. Oh, what I, yeah, like here. So, you know, now the mix will occur here. There it is. So we'll, uh, we'll drop in into the, oh no, almost, almost first drop. Man, this is almost too easy. Um, and uh, and uh, with with all of this, I'm actually excited to do my next radio mix because I'm like, okay, so I can just pick tracks, and then f myself being the control freak that I am, I'm like, oh, I don't know if if I want to have the auto mix like calculate millions of uh, uh, what is it sets or uh, order of tracks for me. I haven't I haven't tried that out actually. So w what a nice challenge or a video would be like, oh, you know, I have my own playlist in order versus the auto mix and which one do you like, right? But yeah, we're in that day and age now. And it's funny, uh, DJ Carlo uh, just put a video up yesterday and he named this the chat GPT of uh, mix it, DJ mixing software. Now there's no prompting here. But it is absolutely that seamless, and so yeah, I'm, I'm basically here saying like, yeah, give give this a shot. Like it's it's incredible. Makes um, makes DJ making DJ mixes in Ableton like uh, sending a letter per post or something like that. Something like really elaborate. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. So locking locking transitions, right? Um, let me see where. Wh oh yeah, over here, right over here. So say you, you love this transition, you're like, oh, I don't want to touch this. You can just lock it and it won't move. So you can move the, the, the mix anywhere um, and it just won't go. So this, this is not for the other transitions. This one is, uh, is free. This one, let me, <laughs> let me blow your mind with this one. So I'm going back to the, the, the playlist. Let me, uh, let me see, this is a different version than uh, mine here. All right, so we have the tracks, right? They're mixed and whatnot. But maybe at the end of the mix, I'm like, ah, I'm listening to it, and maybe, you know, this track should go somewhere else in the mix, and so maybe I want this track. Can I, can I drag it here? This one? Yeah. So maybe I want, uh, maybe I want this track to be uh, earlier in the mix. And it's done. 
transition is in there, it's there. Can you imagine doing this in Ableton, right? No. And so, yeah, it's, it's wild, such a, a time saver. And so um, I've, I've purely been explaining this from, from my uh, perspective. Um, and so what I would usually do then is to add the voiceover, right, for my radio show. So what I like doing is exporting this into Ableton. So when you hit that export button, um, which is Ableton Live, uh, I like the horizontal way. So it'll just be two tracks and then export. And then, because I, I really want to show you what the automation does in Ableton, what, the, what kind of like plugins it chooses. And so then you're back into like familiar realms, right? So take a, it'll take a little bit. Now you're exporting 2.7 gigabyte of data right now. And once we're at 17, we're now compressing it to 1.4 gigabyte. So the professor knows. <laughs> yeah. Trust us. So these are the most horrible moments in a demo where you just have a spinner and you're wondering, is it working or not? It is working. Yeah, this is where I and There's room for improvement. We'll, yeah. we'll make it the progress bar. <laughs> this is a nice opportunity yeah. to just get a drink to, in your studio yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Does the compression yeah. involve the quality? No, 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 no. no. Yeah. So now you see the, the zip file in the top. Oh yeah, the top over here. Top. Unzip it. Yeah. And this is the Ableton file. Double click it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so why, why not the uh, possibility of a voice over in the program itself? Yeah, good question. That's the difference. This is the production version, and I have also the development version with all that cool stuff inside. <laughs> so, yeah, I so can, they're they're I working on it. Yeah, and, and we are in the in the in the lab in the ADE lab. So if you come over there, you can go into any detail. Yeah. And if it's not already in there, then we like the idea, and we're going to build it. As I said, we have a really large development team. Yeah. We had a Vince. Yeah. Ha <laughs> HP Vince in the house. Hey. Yeah, no, so this is brilliant. So for instance, uh, look at the track volume. So obviously the, the whole mix is exactly the way it was in uh, DJ Studio. There we go. Yeah, and so what it does, it, it just grabs... Um, Ableton plugins for the uh, the EQ like the EQ3, uh, and uh, what do you have for volume actually? Because I, I always thought it was a utility. Yeah, well, that was the checkbox you didn't check. You can oh, use okay. the utility for <laughs> volume, yeah. or you can set uh, the track volume. And now yeah. it's the track volume because you didn't check that box. It so is that it. new, people. It is that new. But uh, no, so so basically, I would then just obviously over here you can adjust the mix and whatnot, and put your voice over in and put a limiter on the on the output and and that sort of thing. But the but the heavy weight is is lifted with this. And see, I can't even imagine like the amount of things that you're able to do with this. For instance, we're not going to show this to you, but when you export a, a, like an hour long mix out to YouTube and you've taken the tracks from YouTube, it'll generate graphics for you, like the, the waveform and what, what, what else do you have? Like, cause it, oh, here, here we go. Because this is, this is amazing as well. Say you do a, a DJ mix and you want to post it on, on YouTube. You can go over here. Oh, yeah. But if you're lazy, you can say apply to all and just do some random settings. This is all. Let, let, let me jump to YouTube. If you take the. Uh, sorry to hijack your. Uh, oh, no, no problem. No, I actually didn't export a YouTube mix yet, but I think the feature is incredible. Well, if you look 
uh, what we do uh, when, you, when we export to YouTube. Uh, you see the, uh, the index of the video, then you see the video. Yeah. And we, uh, we, we play nice with you, so we already create this, uh, this, this track list for you, uh, exporting to YouTube. And uh, there's, there's content ID in there, so you see YouTube, they only identify 10 tracks. There are more, but uh, at least they show it over here. So this is, this is the visualization. You need some form of video to upload to YouTube, and it's a beautiful channel. It's the biggest music library in the world, uh, as far as I know. So that's for um, YouTube exporting. Was there more that we did miss? No, I, I mean, for me, this is, this is how I would work with it. So I am contemplating on like, oh, you know, maybe for Mix Mash Radio, we need to put some like hour long mix on, uh, on YouTube and whatnot. And obviously for me, for my radio show, um, yeah, yeah, these, these sort of things, if I can save time, then uh, yes, please, yeah. And uh, just the intuitivity of it, because this all looks like really complicated, but it's uh, it's basically Legos, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, I I am super impressed. That's why I'm standing here, and um, yeah, I was happy to be able to to show. Oh yeah, well, there's so many features. It's crazy, and this is the AI uh, flexing right now. This is your brain against the AI. Yeah, you lose. Yeah, you lose. Yeah. No, but uh, what I do want to emphasize as well, because of, of his love for DJing, that the algorithm they programmed is absolutely proper. I myself was blown away when they mentioned the energy in tracks, because usually it's just mix and key, mix and key, mix and key, and I'm like, I don't really mix and key. Um, and yeah, so the DNA of real DJing is in, in there. And so, oh, did, did the track, track order change completely? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we do have a Command-Z uh, support for the lover, uh, the people who make mistakes, so these are... The oh yeah, this one was locked, huh? Uh, so yeah, so yeah. They, they, they keep on being locked, even if you do auto-mix, yeah. so you can have a bunch of locked uh, songs. Check, but, check, check, uh, check, command check, C, Command-Z, command check, check. C, and this is your... <laughs> okay. Hello? Yeah, hello. So uh, this is your mix, it's, it's back again. Command-C, Command-Y, that's... Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, so this yeah. is amazing. I, I do need to explain that my mix for Way Back Luke is uh, uh, in, in time line, beginning like tracks of like in the 90s, uh, begin 2000s for uh, DJ Anna, up until like the modern time. So it, it's a completely different thing. But it's good to know that something like this would be the perfect mix then, right? Yeah. Hey, and we do our own uh, key analysis. Uh, we do a Fourier transformation on the music. So we get all frequencies uh, independently on any note. That's why we can do uh, repitching. We can pitch up and down without uh, touching the quality of the music, even if you change the tempo with 50 BPM. We do have a little pitch up and down with one semitone. Uh, we don't like uh, women to sing like this. So um, It's very deep house. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um, and so you, 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 you can play around uh, with that. And the Automix also takes that into account, the repitching. You know what I used to spend a lot of time on as well in Ableton is to, is to change the, the tempo of all the yeah. tracks. Yeah. And it's, it's done here. But also if you then just want your mix to be one tempo, I'm missing a button here. This is an update, right? Uh, if you go to manual. Oh, here, yeah. Here I can go up and down in tempo. Let's see what it does. So, because we know all frequencies, we can package them in the right way, and it always sounds good. Yeah. And so say if I'm doing a mix for radio, right? I could just set the BPM uh, to 128, and then it'll apply it to everything. Yeah, you, you right? can flatten it out if you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So everything is 128, uh, one, yeah. 128. Apply, and then everything is. Oh. Yeah. Everything's yeah. flat. What's about the gain? Um, we have the gain on the individual tracks. So here you can uh, set the gain for a track if it's too low, and we uh, detect the gain while we import the music, and we have an auto gain already in there. Yeah. 
The yeah. future is here. And, it's crazy. And, and, and here you see the, the, the crazy. Yeah. And uh, you know, I would love to, personally, I would love to get into a discussion and controversy of like, oh, but now everyone can DJ and put a, a hour-long DJ mix on, on YouTube and, and whatnot without even having touched the decks. Maybe we can touch base on that. Touching, uh, touching decks, that is bit. something that I'm a wannabe. And I'm, I'm happy if I survive uh, uh, bars on the CDJ. So that's your specialty. And I think that still is a specialty. But this is a nice step up for people who are playlist lovers. And as soon as they grow out of the bedroom, they buy the consoles anyway. So it is, it is for the audience that's almost a DJ. It's also a perfect step up. And we do have an integration with YouTube videos. And let me see. It's just, just. Oh, yeah, there's some of the magic as well. Yeah. And how does the, uh, with YouTube, uh, does YouTube know every song ever, or what happens if they don't know a song? Well, then you can find it. <laughs> the song is in here. So he, he's searching on YouTube directly right now. Ah, okay. yeah. yeah, so I look for uh, Tiesto, and uh, here are a few Tiesto songs. Oh, by the way, if you uh, preview it, uh, you see the video playing because the creator uh, gets his, his place for the video. <laughs> So here you have the videos, but more magic. If we go over here, here you see uh, the that music. That fast. Did yeah. you see that? Did you just see that? I you can do selected it in slow them motion. from YouTube yeah. and, and now it's here. Yeah, so where is. Uh, where is the if you ain't redlining. Um, you need to hurry, sorry. And you, you can you can you can play backwards as you can see and forward and you can go through your music uh, pretty fast. Is there a compressor or a maximizer? No, not yet. Not yet. What you see is what you get in the production version, but we do have the instable development version. I'm happy to show it in the lab. Do you have a question? Yeah, uh, two um, So, how does it work? You know, like you connect to your connection from Rekabon, let's say, but it doesn't own, like it doesn't have the actual music uploaded. So, how do you have access then? Uh, Recordbox is on your local computer. So it doesn't um, use the Recordbox then? And we just read your Recordbox database. Yeah, here. Oh yeah, so it says, like, do, do you want to import it from Recordbox? So it's actually just an option there. Yeah, so I can I can make Recordbox my, uh, my library in here. And uh, Recordbox is trying to start up. Here we go. Close. So in here... I have this DJ Mac list with Maximum Crazy, keep on rolling. And uh, let's go to close, create uh, local music. I, I'm so happy he's navigating because yeah. the options <laughs> in this are, are incredible. Yeah, so here's your DJ Mac. And it's not uploaded, right, on the cloud. It, it's take, where, where is it taken from? Yeah, well, it's technical where Recordbox has it technical. We just follow. So if you put it in your Dropbox, we will get it from your Dropbox. If you are an iCloud fan, uh, we'll put it, uh, we'll grab it in there. And otherwise, we'll grab it from your local disk or one of the external disks. Uh, yeah. And we learned a lot, a lot. I mean, every DJ has his own way of storing music uh, <laughs> with a capital M. And we had a lot of updates necessary for even people that find out, oh, oh, I, oh, I did have Recordbox 5, oh, and 3, and 4, oh. Yeah, so a lot of Recordbox databases, at first we tried to find everything automatically for you, but yeah, and Virtual DJ has on every, and Serato have on every little USB stick, they have another database. Yeah, so, but we found it. So yeah. did you see, he was talking on the mic and the DJ mix is done. <laughs> Isn't that, that's wild, right? Yeah, it is. Hey, um, crazy. thank you, Luke. Yes, yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to uh, Helen. Um, Helen Satori, she is uh, responsible for 
lots of things at Beatport, but she's also responsible for having the relation with DJ Studio. You want the mic? This one? Uh, I'll go for that yes? one. Okay. I'm definitely too short for this. Okay, hi, hi everyone. Um, my name's Helen. I look after creative services at Beatport. Um, and what that essentially means is everything DJ related, so Beatport, BeatSource, DJ City, and everything producer related. So our other brands are Plugin Boutique, um, Loop Cloud, and Loop Masters. So this really fits right in the sweet spot between all the things I spend my time looking at. And we are super excited to be able to announce uh, uh, integration of Beatport streaming into DJ Studio. Um, one of the reasons we've been watching with such anticipation of <laughs> Seafront's amazing team of mad scientists is that I think it does really showcase what we call, talk about internally as our, like a hybrid workflow, right? That's a, a DJ that's using streaming and downloads in a, in a combined workflow together. We, we love streaming. We also understand the limitations of streaming for DJ. Um, and we really do see this new behavior coming up, which is people use streaming to browse, to find tracks they love, to prep sets. But when they really love tracks, they still want to own them and download them. And I think this product really showcases that and is a really healthy way for us to be thinking about streaming in the DJ world going forward. So... Oh, there we go. So how does it look? Um, it's pretty simple, really. If you've used Beatport Streaming in any of the other software integrations, like Recordbox or Serato or other integrations are available, um, it's exactly the same. So you log in with your streaming account. Um, we have Beatport and BeatSource um, supported. Um, and then you will see this representation of our entire catalog. Uh, you can search by uh, genre, Top 100s, you've got your My Beatport playlists in there as well. It's blisteringly fast. Uh, I will not be taking jokes about how much faster it is than the Beatport website, um, but it's, it's several times faster. Um, and um, that's pretty much it. You select the tracks you like, um, you pull them into your, your playlist. We've already been through Auto Mix and the, the magic that happens, so we won't go into that in too much detail. Um, if you don't have it in your, your My Beatport uh, folders already and you've got a Spotify playlist that you might want to convert, that's in there as well. Again, blisteringly fast. Um, it's a simple drag and drop. Um, match what you've got on Spotify to Beatport and you're after the races. Um, so this is the auto mix uh, pro workflow that uh, Luke was, was showing us earlier. And um, I think as a producer first, DJ, and I don't usually say that in Beatport circles, but that was my background. I was a producer before I got introduced to the world of DJing. This has been actually a real game changer for me because I found the deck so intimidating and I used to cheat. I used to go into Ableton and I used to make my mix. I used to output it and then I'd pretend to press buttons uh, because you always got a bit of extra fee as an artist if you did a DJ set at the end of your show. Uh, but I wasn't really doing it, right, because it's scary and you have to do it live. And if you've got that producer mindset of, you know, arrangement view, essentially, rather than session view. Um, it's really, really scary to do it live. Um, so I know you were talking, Luke, about how potentially there's a bit of controversy over here about making it too easy. I actually disagree. I think that this was the, the first tool that actually got me back on the decks because it allowed me to plan out a set in advance. It allowed me to feel really confident about tra my transitions and to visualize what I was doing um, in a way that, I couldn't do naturally on the decks because it's just not how my brain works. Um, so that's why we love it so much. Um, this is the, the magic bit at the end when I was saying about the hybrid workflow. Um, if you do want to upload this mix to the platform of your choice, obviously there's a problem with streaming, right? It's, it's not licensed um, for that. So you need to be able to purchase the tracks that you want to upload um, so you're doing it legally and you're not going to have copyright issues. Um, this is a super, super fast way to basically create a cart in your Beatport account, go straight there and check out immediately. Um, once you've done that, I believe all of your export options become available and you can upload it straight away. Um, and that's the real fun part, I think, for us, because like I said, it's really not using streaming to replace downloads in any way, but it means that when you buy a track, you can be really confident that you're going to be able to use it in a set. It's going to work. It's not a gamble anymore. 
and you can be so much more efficient with your budget. And that's what we want to support at Beatport. Um, so that's a little whistle-stop tour of what it's going to look like in Beatport. I'm sure if you drop by the lab tomorrow, you'll be able to see it in action, because this is brand new, off the press, uh, new integration. Um, would love to hear what you think about it. I'll be around afterwards if anybody wants to chat. Um, and congratulations again on the amazing product. Thank you. Thanks. All right, hello everyone. I'm Evan from 1001 Tracklist. Uh, many of you probably know 1001 Tracklist, but if you don't, it's a DJ tracklist database. So when someone plays a set at Tomorrowland or uploads uh, Luke's radio show online, someone from our user community or the artists themselves will add the tracklist to our site so you can see minute by minute exactly what track is being played. And we're excited to introduce the integration with DJ Studio we're now from 1001 Tracklist. You can directly export a tracklist into DJ Studio. So for all the tracks that have already been released and we've got YouTube or Beatport links, uh, you can get them directly into DJ Studio to make your own version of that or play around with the tracks, change the order, put your own tracks into it, but it's basically your starter template uh, to make your own version of someone else's set or mix. Also directly from, oh yeah, so this is using your, your Beatport tracks uh, from DJ Studio. Um, so basically every Beatport link that we have on 1001 Tracklist will then get imported into DJ Studio so you can make your own mix. And it's directly accessible on DJ Studio as well. So here you can search for any track lists. Uh, you can also find the 1001 track list charts on here. So the weekly charts, the yearly charts, uh, you can use this to make you know, the, the top tracks of the week um, directly in DJ Studio. That's it. It's pretty, pretty easy. Okay, uh, what's next? Uh, what's next is every question that you have right now that I have to answer with no. I will answer it with almost or tomorrow or yes. So um, yes, there are uh, logical things for us to do. Um, <laughs> the mic. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the DJ shorts. Everybody's asking, oh, can we get DJ shorts? Uh, yes, if you come to the lab, I can show it. Uh, and uh, it's going to be in there. Um, stem separation, of course, stem separation. Everybody's doing stem separation. Uh, and it's really cool, then you don't need any harmonic mixing anymore. Uh, you can just uh, filter out uh, the melody or uh, a vocal. Uh, so yeah, we played with, uh, there are only two stem separation technologies. There is uh, Splitter. Splitter is an open source technology from a hackathon of Deezer. And it's okay-ish, uh, Recordbox uses it. Uh, and uh, there are a few companies denying they use it, but they use it. Or they use DMUX from Meta, uh, the old Facebook. And DMUX is a really good technology, is very good stem separation technology. And those are the only two stem separation um, platforms in the world. And everybody who says, oh, we build it ourselves, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> so it's gonna be in here. Yeah, uh, VST support. People say, oh, I wanna do the mastering or compression, why isn't it in here? Well. It's not in here because everything you saw, believe it or not, is a website. So this is a website and um, that's how we started making this website. So it runs on a phone, it runs on a Chromebook, it runs everywhere. Uh, but we have an app version, then we package the website on your computer so that we can access your local record box. And now that we are on the local computer and we're we're there for three months now, so now we, it opens up the way to talk to VSTs as well. So it's gonna be in there, but uh, we had other priorities first. Uh, automation, people have ah, ideas, oh, I'd like ping pong, ping pong, you know? If I just mark it, uh, right click, and then I wanna say ping or pong, depending on uh, which track it is. And those, those types of automation, uh, copying and pasting, it's easy. And we do it for DJs, because we don't have producers in our software. Well, maybe there are, because they're also DJs, but we are 
mainly focusing on DJs. That's why you see with the automation that we have a transition block and the transition goes, is about two tracks and not one track. So we do have automation if you want to play with echo or uh, phasers or other wrong stuff. Uh, it's in there, yeah. Uh, an offline version, yes. Uh, performing uh, DJs, hey, you're flying and it's a web version. Hmm. How do I get the web version uh, in the plane? Well, sometimes it's possible, but most of the time it isn't. So our offline version is almost ready. In a few weeks you will see it so that you can play with DJ Studio offline. Um, Beatport locker integration. So you have your thousand songs, you know, so you can put them in there. And we have a mobile version. I've got it on my phone, by the way. And uh, it's pretty cool. It, it's another type of navigation, but it's in there. Um, yeah, we have the, the YouTube uh, video mixing. If you want to share it, here, let me show you. We, we just created this, uh, where are we? Over here. So let's say I have a YouTube mix, YouTube, YouTube. And I had these three demo tracks. Let me open it for you so that you can enjoy it. Let's say we have a short mix. Here we go. I'm always on the beat, so I can cut this out. And here, I'm sure we are on the wrong key, going from 8 to 12, so this will sound awful. Uh, help me a little bit. Yeah. Yep, it sounds awful, that's good. <laughs> so uh, let's go from uh, high to low and uh, see if we survive. So everybody recognizes this as being awful, that's good. Uh, save, and now we export it. Well, these export options are all disabled. Uh, from a technical perspective, yes, we can rip the audio, no problem. Uh, that's the most asked question on our help desk at the moment. Can you rip the audio? Yes, we can, but we won't. Um, but we do have a sharing function in here. And this is pretty cool. So I have my uh, demo uh, basement. And uh, I can say allow remixing so somebody else can pick up my mix. This is really cool. And I'll press next. And now it's uploading from the basement and then going more up. Here we are. And um, Can we enlarge this? So if you scan the QR code, you will see the YouTube player, but you will also see the remix button. And if you press the remix button, you are, boom, in DJ Studio, on your phone, in the browser. And that version is the production version. Uh, that's, or is it, oh, it's development. Oh, shit, I'm in development, yeah. Okay, I don't know if remix is working then for you, but anyway, let me show you what happens. So, we uh, create a YouTube player page, and in a YouTube player page, you have the tracks. Uh, we can do the same with Beatport, where you can share mixes with, uh, with other uh, Beatport users. And here it is. Let's play it. Uh, yeah, play it. Unknown territory in here. No. Okay, well, uh, it's probably the basement. Uh, anyway, and here's a remix button, and if you press the remix button, uh, oh, let me grab this and put it in an incognito browser. So, if you press the remix button, you get the URL, and remixing it in here brings you directly into a DJ studio, and you see this DJ studio is, uh, is running in the browser, and you can start uh, playing with it. And let's see if my awful transition is in here. And this is this is the this is the the, the mobile version and the tablet version. So this is for the for the playlist lovers. And of course, you can go into the studio in here. Hey, uh, thank you for your uh, attention, everybody. Yep.